Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the PL300 exam preparation series where we are exploring the third learning path, visualize and analyze the data. In this video, we will continue our discussion on the topic format and configure visualizations. Next, we have the water, funnel and scatter chart visuals. So let's explore these three visuals one by one. So here I have pulled in a blank waterfall chart on the canvas. So first have a look at the different fields which are required to populate this. So the two fields which are required uh, are the category and y-axis. This is a field that is not mandatory, but we are going to have a look at what is the purpose of this field. So remember once we were discussing what is the purpose of a waterfall chart, so we said that we want to use a waterfall chart if you want to see a variance in a certain measure. So whatever measure that we have, we are going to put that in the y-axis and the category, which is most likely a time category, it could be other categories as well, but you want to see a vari the variation over time. So it is better to have some time or date field here in the category. So now let me just populate this and then we will see how this uh, this thing works. So here I have populated this category area with the start of the month so that the visual doesn't get cluttered. So we will have one value for each month. And in the Y axis, I have put in something that we haven't had a look at before. We have discussed about this thing, but let me just show you what this is. So this is a month over a month cost variance. So remember, once we were discussing the time intelligence functions, and we looked at a pattern which was the previous period pattern. Then I said that it is very easy for us that we can compute the month over month difference or the variance. So this is what exactly is happening here. So I've created this month over month cost variance measure, which is just subtracting the total cost and the uh, it is just subtracting that last month cost from the total cost. So we are we have the total cost and we have the last month's cost and what we are doing is that we are just subtracting these two things so that we have a month over month variance in terms of the cost. So what exactly is is being is happening here is that this cost month over month cost variance has been pulled into this into the y axis. So now let's have a look at this visualization. So what is this visualization actually showing? So here you are seeing the starting value for January 1997 and then you are just going to see the variance. So this is telling me that in February, the, the month over month variance had a negative value. Then between February and March, there was this positive variance. And then between April and March, this was the this there was this negative variance. So you, you can clearly see that the trend in your month over month cost. So it, it clearly shows where the cost is value is increasing and where it is dis, decreasing. So this is the kind of stuff that you probably cannot see in, a, in, a, in any other visualization. So this is why this uh, waterfall chart gives you an idea. So here you can see in the in the legend also the colors for the positive are increasing and for the negative these are decreasing and you get the total variance value in the at the last which is this blue bar so we can uh, use any other similar measure inside uh, inside our waterfall chart and we can most likely it it makes sense to use it with with some time measure Next, we have this breakdown field that we did not explore earlier. So I can put any categorical value here to further further have and see the impact of the of my measure across this. So let me just pull in my gender here. So because this this can easily clutter this. So let me just pull in my my gender here. So now what it is showing. So if, if I just come across to this particular area. So here it is just telling me that what is the share of the male and female gender across this particular month. So it effectively breaks down your total value across the male and female gender. So where we have an increase, we are going to see that, okay, what was the increase because of the male and female values and so on and so forth. So 
Uh, although this can become easily cluttered, but if you have less number of fields, then you can actually go and see the breakdown. So this was all about the waterfall chart. And we see that how we can see a trend or we can see a variance inside within a within a within a trend for any particular measure. And we can normally we normally want to see this breakdown across any date or time field. Next, we are going to have a look at the funnel chart. But before going into the funnel chart, I am not using the file that we have been using for the previous video. So I have downloaded a new file which is in the supporting material area and you can download that file from that area so this is a pbix file with the name opportunity analysis sample pbix file so i'm not going to explain what is this file but i am just going to focus on this particular visual here so we have two columns in this table one is the sales stage and another is an opportunity cost so remember once we were talking about the funnel chart i said that we are normally using the funnel chart where we have some kind of a process. So here there is a sales staging or a stale sales pipeline defined by the five stages. So we have the first stage as lead, the second stage as qualify, the third stage as solution, the fourth stage as proposal and fifth stage as finalized. And we have certain uh, maybe certain opportunity associated with all of these and we have the, the opportunity cost associated with each stage of this process. So you can, rel you can relate this with any other uh, process um, in day-to-day -day application. So for example, I could say that if I have to hire a few people, then I would have a hiring pipeline. So I would have uh, a few people who are, who, who are actually apply for the job, then there would be another process where I shortlist a few people. Then based on the shortlisting, maybe I, I do further uh, uh, filtering and, uh, and uh, ask a few people to appear for the interview. And then finally, uh, maybe a couple of people get selected. So this is the kind of a funnel where you have more people entering a process and very less people coming out of that process. So similar to that, we have this kind of an arrangement here. So what I'm going to do right now here that I'm going to go and convert this table visual into a funnel chart. So now, and I'm just going to make it bigger. So now if you come here, this is a funnel chart and this has the, the sales stages on the left side here. And you can see that this is apparently making a funnel. So you have more values at the top and then it is resembling a kind of a funnel here. So, so if I just hover, put my mouse or hover it over the lead area, it is telling me that in the sales stage, the name of the stage is lead. The opportunity count was 268 and this was the starting point. So we have the percentage as a hundred percent. Then if I come to the previous one, uh, to, to the next one, which is the qualify. So here I see that out of 268, 94, our values are here in this stage, which is 35% of the total value. Similarly, then if I go, then this is the percentage that I'm seeing from the previous one, which is the, which is 78%. So 74 is, is 78% of 94. And the first stage percentage as compared to the first stage, I have the percentage as 27%. So at the end of the funnel, this is what I get and this is the 5.22. So I can say that this whole process starting from, from the lead to the finalize has a 5.2 conversion ratio or a conversion rate because 268 people entered or 268 was the count at the start of the funnel and it uh, at the end of the funnel, the count is 14, which is just 5.2%. So if you have such a kind of a data, in your application because we did not have this kind of a data in maven market so i had to actually use another file and for this purpose you can use the funnel chart visual and this is very very useful a lot of people try to use it as a replacement for a bar chart which is not the right thing to do so you cannot have categories here which are there on a bar chart unless you have some kind of a process do not use the funnel chart in any of your visualizations the next visual that we are going to explore is the scatter plot or the scatter chart. 
so i am just selected the scatter chart and this is a visualization which is very very important and has a lot of use so this visualization has the capability that it can give you a relationship between two quantitative values or in our case two measures so let's have a look at what is required to actually build this visualization so here if you see i have pulled in two fields and pulled put one field in the x axis which is my total cost which is shown here and in the y axis i am putting in my total transactions which you can see on the y axis here and on the visualization all i see is one dot which is which is represented by this blue dot here so what is actually happening so what is happening is that the total value of cost and the total value of transaction for the complete data set are being are being plotted in an xy quadrant but the purpose is not to actually just plot this value we have to break the break this down across a specific category so we have to pick pick one categorical column so we have been using the region column so let me just go and pick the region column again and i can put this into two areas so first i am going to put this into this values area here so now you see that instead of the one dot i am seeing like seven dots seven or eight dots which for each dot is actually representing my sales region so if i just put my mouse here so it is saying that this dot actually belongs to the northwest region where the total cost is 342043 and then there is a cost value also and then there is this value for all the other regions so this is one way of putting this into the values area so now let me just delete it from here and now let me just put it in the legend area so if i put this in the legend area legend area the only difference is that a different color is assigned to each of these so i have a different color for this i have different color for these and i have in my legend here in this area that what are the different regions and what are the colors associated with each region so these are the at least three of these fields are required to actually represent your information on the scatter plot and here we have two measures and we have at least one categorical value then we have another area which says size so here we have the opportunity to even add a third measure inside this visualization so let me just go and pick one other measure so we have been using total quantity so let me just pick total quantity and bring it here on and put it in the size pane here so what you are actually seeing is that the size of the bubbles which was which was kind of constant previously now you are seeing that there is a there is a different size associated with all of this so what is this size actually representing the size is actually representing the total quantity so if you have a larger value of quantity you have a larger bubble and if you have a smaller value then you have a smaller bubble so as we are looking at a retail data set and we see that all of these things are actually associated so we are seeing a kind of a linear behavior as well that as the value of transaction increases then the cost would also increase so this is kind of a linear behavior that we can see here one last field here is a very interesting field which is a play axis so let me just pull in any time based field into this area so i'll go and i will bring in my start of month field here and pull it in the put it in the play axis so now if i just expand this you are actually seeing a play axis here on the bottom of your of of, of your x axis and there is a play button here so if i just go and click on this play button i am going to see some kind of an animation animated effect and what is this animation showing it is showing what is the change in the values for all the month so remember we have put in the start of the month so this is kind of an animation that how the values of each region are changing with every month so this is a very interesting feature which is not available in any other visualization that we have seen so far and this is a kind of an animation effect that you can see inside this particular 
visual rest we have just the tool tip so obviously the tool tip is, is, is exactly the same as you see for any other visual so this was all about the scatter visual the scatter chart visual and if i come to the area of the formatting here the same options that we have already seen we have already kind of covered all of these options so there is nothing uh, much to you know explore in this area so expect you to just have a look at some of the options here which are related to the coloring to the font and to the other parts of the visualization so that was all about the scatter plot so we are going to explore a few more visuals in the other part of this video so i'll catch up with you in the next one